everything goes alright. <laughs> um, Pussy likes my whistle. So. Um, I'm calm enough to forget my lines. <laughs> when you walk upon the beach, you leave footprints in the sand, unless you're different from the rest and you walk upon your hands. My first one is called Crunchy. I'd much rather have a bite of data than a bite of cake, because a kilobyte is far more useful than a kilogram. I'd much rather have a bite of an apple than a bite of storage, because what good is memory if I faint at my desk? I'd much rather have a bite of rich text format than a bite of alphabet soup, because what good is RTF? No. <laughs> because a bite of RTF is more legible. I'd much rather have a bite of a sandwich than a bite of data, because I'm pretty sure that computers taste awful. <laughs> <laughs> punk ass bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I've a denim jacket plastered in patches, a can of beer and a pocket full of matches, ripped skinny jeans over ripped skinny legs, if I say no, then nobody begs. My arms are a colouring book that no one dares touch, I steal on my boot tips and sure as much. My reputation follows me without a hitch, don't go near her, she's the punk ass bitch. If I walk by the playground, the whole park is deserted. Ice cream is dropped and parents are alerted. But this time I notice something that isn't quite right. So I slouch on a swing set and behold a curious sight. A little boy, seven, is coming quite near. He looks me in the eye with no unjust fear. He reaches for my spiky hair with eyes like bubble gum and pats it in wonder before returning to his mum. She cannons me a glare of her hideous frown. So I straighten my back and walk away through the town. Now I make business and cross the road and old ladies twitch. Because who am I? I'm the punk ass bitch. <laughs> Congratulations. You were braver than me. You came out to your mum and your friends and the world sons a fit of anger. This scared young person, who I know feels far more deeply about the remarks than will ever be let on. I've been there too. We all have our own coming out stories, our own secret crushes, our own midnight breakdowns. And yes, for once, that is so gay. You and I, we talk about college as if it will not be terrifying as if we will not be glad to see the back of secondary school. I know I will. I hope we go to the same college, stick together and run riot over the established equality groups, then head home together, better friends than we started out, and cry on each other's shoulders about failed boyfriends and rejected kisses and whatever that one kid in history said today. I hope we can see each other happy. Dear you, 
I get how you feel, and I promise you, it does get better. So, wishing you the very best of luck, Dave. P.S. I'll gag if you get too soppy. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was going to perform it or not, but I think I'm going to anyway, because, I don't know, it's interesting, probably. <laughs> Slightly <laughs> whiny. <laughs> this one is called Nailed. Do you bite your fingernails? Why is there so much grime beneath your fingernails? Do you know how unhygienic it is to chew on fingernails? What do you call a lesbian with long fingernails? Single. <laughs> I am sat here, flicking my nails, watching as the tiny fragments of DNA disappear into the darkness of my scarcely lit room, wondering if one day they'll find their way back, up, point first, back under my skin. I usually leave at least one finger untouched, so that I can still open things and use my hands after I've stripped them of their hard-earned defences. The skin under your nail is the only part of you soft enough for certain insects to bite, so strip the armour. I keep my nails even shorter than I keep my hair. Shorter than any other girl in the year. Waiting for the right person to notice. But I remain single. Everyone <laughs> is better at this than me. I have been out for years. Girls out for months find dates within weeks and share saliva in secret behind the bins whilst I stare dry-mouthed at a blank page. <laughs> Whenever my nails grow out again, I find it nigh impossible to keep them clean. The dirt keeps creeping in underneath. So hours are spent introducing it to the harsh bristles of a scrub brush that seems better at expelling my blood than that muck. I do this until I am numb with monotony and my mind wanders, leaving the bathroom sink where my forehead rests against the cupboard to anywhere else it can go. Am I the dirt beneath your fingernails, girl? You should be more responsible for your cleanliness. But wait, you don't want to be responsible at all. <laughs> Alright, this next one is my angry poem, because we all need an angry poem. <laughs> And it's entitled Lick. A liar, she calls me. The hot tongue whips forth and scolds my cheek, searching for flaws in my bruised face. I stand there, meek. What can I pull forth against her onslaught? She is wild, reckless, a demon caught. I ask a question, my own tongue slipping quietly through my lips. She screams at me. Something inside me rips. For six months she has toyed with me. But I'm at fault, is her decree. My tongue slipped once and she never forgave. Now she pummels it back into me. Cracking ribs, tearing skin. She won't rest but for my grave. Boiling insipid tears burn ditches down to the corners of my mouth and I am gone. A rack of scorched paper, broken foam, smashed glass. My own tongue gliding over the details of her farce, tainting them. So they bleed out over false memories that crackle in the fire she has started in my soul. I let it burn until there is only a hole. Then I pick up the ashes, try to. They sift through my fingers like sand, leaving only a coarse, smouldering hand. Identity is my challenge, so here is the tale of how mine was replaced by the number on the scale. This girl was year seven, this girl felt fat. This girl was year eight, this girl fixed that. A horde of voices sickens a school, whispered inadequacies that race through us all. I poked my stomach and pinched my thighs, counted the calories and ate all your lies. 
You are what you eat. I wanted to be nothing. I don't want to be me. I want to be her. My beautiful best friend who in the end hated me for somehow surviving. She was a bag of bones. We reigned on adjoined thrones in year seven at the bottom of the dog pile. We can't reconcile. Did you eat breakfast? Yes, uh, bullshit. I skipped that meal too and we both bloody knew it. I'm a bud that shan't flower. From mirrors I cower. The saliva in my mouth tastes dirty and sour. Soon, I'm finding it hard to stay afloat as chocolates and etiquettes are forced down my throat. Mother, where is your daughter? The fashion industry bought her with their shiny mask full of skinny bitch highs. Now she's bareback and breathing in water. I'm losing control. My epitaph I'm carving for this is the identity of a girl who is starving. And you know what, honey? I wasn't saved by prayers. I collapsed on a friend and now that girl gets nightmares. Then they all watch me rot of this dreaded disease. Please, just eat something. It's not that hard. You just open your mouth and you chew, chew, swallow. But I liked being hollow. Somehow I made it, with a lifeline hashed together out of text messages and tear stained notes and a few too many giving ups, they pulled me to shore. This was an illness 12 times more likely to off me than any other cause of death. So thank you, Naomi. Thank you, Emily, Lauren, Sammy. Thank you, Amy and Beth. I did not drown locked in a bone corset. To consumerism's whims, my life was not forfeit. But now, hear my cry. Another 150,000 across this world will die from an eating disorder this year. They are sickened by a sick society that reaches down in a hospital gown to grab the vulnerable from their beds and infect their heads with immeasurable dread. Let us cure this disease that resides in the heart of our culture, and these are the words to start. If you believe me or not else, this one thing remains true. My friend, you are beautiful just as you. your sexuality. No gender, you'll confuse them. Politics, mental illness, also no go zones. Most of them have never even felt broken bones. Trust me, you're better off trying T-Rex. Oh, and definitely don't talk about sex. You'll pollute their minds, you filthy scum. You'll break their psyche and turn them numb. Mar them, scar them, mentally bar them from unlocking their true potential. You mean like me, maybe they're poets too. And perhaps they'll agree that this is hullabaloo. No, not like you. You're a rambling queer. To be honest, I'm surprised the authorities let me anywhere near. I mean a teen, a gay one, the history of insanity, or at the very least one armed with a bleep load of profanity. <laughs> I should probably wear a warning from here on after. Letting this person near children will end in disaster. So if you want my advice on performing to kids, then know that there are lots of things that custom forbids. 
What I'd really suggest is finding a teenage misfit, because that way when you can perform, you can shout out all of your shit. <laughs> <laughs>